Nix is the language that Nix Package Manager and Nixo is the distribution used to package software and build your system. And it is one of the biggest discouragements for beginners, because who wants to learn a whole programming language to use a computer, am I right? However, it exists for a reason, and if you learn to use it properly, you'll understand exactly why it is so good for this task. And so today, we are going to go through the basics of Nix language and learn how to read and write Nix code. And the first thing you need to know is that Nix is a lazily evaluated functional programming language similar to other functional programming languages like Haskell. It was specifically made to write packages, but now obviously has many more use cases. One of the biggest mistakes that I see many beginners do is assume that all of their options they apply in their NixOS configuration is the programming language itself. That is of course not true, because Nix for NixOS is basically the same thing as Lua for NeoVim. NixOS Rebuild simply evaluates an expression inside your configuration.nix and then uses the resulting value to build the system, which means that learning all the available options in NixOS configuration does not mean you know Nix, and knowing how to read and write Nix code does not mean that you will immediately know how to use every NixOS option. Once again, similar to how you can learn Lua and not know how to apply it with NeoVim and vice versa. Nix language itself is quite small and very easy to learn, especially if you have some experience with functional programming. So let's begin. And the first thing that you have probably noticed yourself already is that Nix does not care about indentation, new lines, and the amount of spaces. Moreover, every single Nix piece of code that you can find can be written in one line because that is exactly how Nix code is evaluated. Anything you can put in a Nix file is called an expression. Your configuration file is an expression, a string with interpolated values is an expression, and so is 9 plus 9 and even a simple number 7. And any expression you put in a file can be evaluated with this nix instantiate eval command. Creating a file for each expression you want to test is quite tedious though, so the good thing is, there is a very convenient REPL built into Nix, which you can use to learn and experiment with the language. It works in a similar way to other REPLs, like the ones Python or Node.js give you when you run them without any arguments. Here you can evaluate any Nix expressions and find out their values. We can type a 7 for example and evaluate it to a 7. Same with any other simple values, like booleans, strings or paths. Wait, paths you say? Of course, Nix was specifically made for configuring your system and defining packages, so paths have a first-class citizen support in the language. And if you try to evaluate a dot slash dot expression in the REPL, it will give you your current working directory. Primitive data types are cool, but they are pretty useless by themselves, so let's go through some more complex expressions. Attribute sets are one of the most important data structures in Nix. They are used to store key value pairs and are very similar to dictionaries or hash maps in other languages. If we simply plug a set into the REPL, it will spit it right back out just like with primitive values previously. Sets are frequently used to store other sets inside, and luckily, Nix syntax gives us plenty of cool ways to define them. In this example, we are assigning a key named X to a set that holds A and B attributes. But we can also write it like this, this, or even this. All these examples evaluate to exact same set, so you can choose whichever one you like or whichever suits the most in specific situation. To get a value from the set, we can use a dot key syntax, just like getting a field from an object in other programming languages. In NixREPL, we can also assign this set to a variable and then extract the attribute from it in the next expression. That is not a feature available in regular Nix files, because every Nix file can only contain one expression. It may sound pretty weird given that some Nix files can contain hundreds of lines, but we'll get to it. If we want to define variables before evaluating something, we can make use of a very convenient let expression, which I like to call let and in syntax. Here is a very simple example of its usage. We can basically create as many variables as we want inside it, and then evaluate an expression using those variables. Wrapping an expression with let and in syntax also makes let and in syntax part of the expression. So if we want it, we could simply assign set expression to a key in a set and optionally add parentheses around it to highlight it. The let and in expressions are parsed recursively until all variables are evaluated. This means that we can even use variables in the expressions of other variables. A good example of this is when we define a system variable in flakes and then grab Nix packages with the corresponding system type all within the same let and in expression. 
The dollar sign here is only needed so Nix uses R variable and not the literal system key. Alright, but maybe you want to have the same recursive evaluation mechanism directly in sets. Fortunately, in Nix you can define recursive attribute sets that can hold attributes, referencing values from other attributes within the same set. Here is how they look, the only thing you need to do is add a rec keyword before your set. Sets are cool, but sometimes you want a simple array type data structure, like a list. Lists can be defined with square brackets, and they contain anything from simple integers to sets and even complex expressions. As you can see, every item in the list has to be separated by at least one space. When we think about lists, one very useful expression that comes to mind is width, which is often used to define packages for NixOS, Home Manager or Dev Shells. Basically, it brings values from a set to a scope of any expression as if they were variables defined in a Latin in syntax. It can obviously also be used with any other expressions, not just lists. Hope you understood everything so far, because we finally come to an interesting part, functions. Nix is a functional programming language after all, so it only makes sense that functions would be a major part of it. Here is the most basic function, it is defined by writing a name of the argument, then colon and any expression that it returns. Meaning that this function takes some expression as its only argument and then adds one to it. Here's how we could use it with Latin in syntax to have everything in a single expression. To define functions that take multiple arguments, simply write them one by one with colons after each one of them. Interestingly enough, we are actually nesting functions here. This means that if we only pass one argument to such function, we will get another function which takes the next argument. Kinda like peeling an onion, but instead each layer is an argument if it makes sense. If we want to have kinda real multi-argument functions though, we can just use sets as parameters. This function takes a set with two attributes for example and returns their sum. If this structure looks familiar to you, that is because your configuration.nixnixos module is also simply a function that takes a set as its only parameter and returns another set that contains all your configuration options. The nixos rebuild command simply passes a set with required attributes to it and then performs system mutations based on the resulting values. Let's come back to our simple functions though, because we have some more things to talk about. We can use the question mark symbol to define default values for any attribute. It will be used in case the set we pass to the function does not contain attribute with the same name. But what if we want to have a function that takes any set as long as it has two specific attributes? In that case, we can just add a triple dot at the end, which means that any additional attributes will simply be ignored. That is of course unless we include an add symbol at the end and some name. This interesting structure that you may have seen in some of my previous videos tells Nix to also assign the input set to a variable with that name that comes after add symbol. Attributes can now either be taken the regular way or from this set without having to explicitly write all of them down. In my previous videos, we frequently use this technique to pass all Nix flake inputs to Home Manager or NixOS modules. Oh, and the inherit keyword, it's simply a shorthand for bringing values in from the scope. Alright, and now, let's put the C attribute to use and try out an if then else expression with it. It checks for a boolean expression after the if keyword and then returns either expression after then or the one after else depending on whether it is true or false. Nix language also includes a lot of useful built-in functions, so if you want to see a video about those, leave a comment down below. And now, I would like to thank the sponsors of this video, specifically, Victor Vintores for a 20 euro per month subscription, Hoskins for a 10 euro per month subscription, Linux Rocks for a 10 euro per month subscription, Not a Nut for a 5 euro per month subscription, and also JerOM for a recent 50 euro donation, Coffee Supporter for a 10 euro recent donation, Nixjer for a 6 euro recent donation, Meji00 for a 5 euro recent donation, Gate and LePage for a 5 euro recent donation, Yogurt for a 1 euro recent donation, and Dude9501 for a 2 dollar super thanks on YouTube. As usual, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you are feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.